in about 1994, the county was building this new administration building, and James Miller was the county administrator at that time and, and really worked hard with the architect and a group of people in the community to be sure that this building was welcoming the people in the community. And the Main Street and Historic Preservation folks worked really hard to see that it would fit in with the architecture that had been in this community and some of it that still is. And one of the things that the architect agreed to help make happen when the men were stuccoing the building was an etching of some of the quilt patterns. I think it was a little hard for some of the people to sort out because they wanted an exact replica of the quilt. And we said, well, if that's what we wanted, we would have asked Brenda, the adult, to do all the work. What we wanted was the young kids to look at the work of women from earlier generations, put it on the wall, and make it their own. And I think that's what they've done. And there are days when the sun is shining. It's just stunning, I think, to come around the corner. When you live in a community where 95% of the kids get a free lunch from the federal government, you have to if you're doing art, be doing art and thinking economic development, thinking how can we change the financial reality of people in the community. So that we really did from the beginning encourage the women who were beginning to have people look at their quilts and say, oh, I want to buy that. And as an organization, we did our best to always be in a position to pay the women for residency work, for teaching others. We didn't always succeed, but that was certainly a goal, so that people would begin, women especially, um, who haven't been paid for their work, it's been kind of assumed, that they would begin to think, my time teaching has value, and, and pay for that. When the Arts Commission developed these folk arts apprentice programs, where you could nominate a, a folk artist uh, to be named a master artist, and they would get a grant then to have uh, a number of apprentices. It, it could be one or more apprentices to, to learn the craft with them. And so we ended up nominating Mrs. Rankin for that, and uh, we're lucky enough to get it. I think it was, what, $2,500 grant? And at that point where we were Mrs. Rankin was teaching other women, Geraldine was learning. We said, hey, we should have a quilt show. You know, we should just hang our own things. And we didn't know how it would work, but we started doing advertising in the local newspaper saying that we were, um, we were going to have a quilt. And the, the language is probably pretty stilted, but we, we talked about African American and European aesthetic, you know, this sort of stuff. And a woman named uh, Marian Norton, a white woman, who had come from a family tradition of quilters, some going back several generations. But Marianne had not done much quilting when she was um, raising children and all, but now the kids were gone. She was starting to quilt and wanted a place to display her quilts. And um, she called me on the phone and said, what kind of security are you going to have? We hung the, the quilt. We, we were advertising that we would hang the quilts at the Catholic Community Center. And um, I said, you know, security, it hadn't even occurred to me. <laughs> so I said, well, we'll lock the door and we'll tell the police chief that we have a bunch of quilts in there so that if he sees anybody hauling them away, he should stop <laughs> them. Well, Mary Ann had a reputation among all the white quilters as the very best one. Um, sometimes they didn't want to acknowledge that because there was a lot of um, competition, but we started getting calls saying, if this show is good enough for Marianne, it's good enough for us, I want an application. So because she was willing to take the risk and, and work with an organization that only had African American quilters at the time, the other women were willing to follow her. So from the very beginning, we've had quilts on display um, that were made by white women and black women. And I think that that really has, has meant a lot of growth for both populations of quilters. We always printed a program that had a brief description of each quilt and either not for sale or 
how much it was. And we did a lot of work um, thinking about the amount of time and materials that went into quilts. And we knew that you really couldn't pay somebody a living wage to, to make quilts. You can't pay them a living wage and, and actually sell the quilts unless you have built up the kind of reputation that, that tr you know, artists have. By getting the quilts outside the community, we thought, you know, that, that was the best way. Because, you know, if you're trying to tap into a market, Claiborne County is not a very substantial one, especially since everybody already has their quilts. And really, we had just gotten uh, the quilt portion of the website up in the ether <laughs> uh, at the time, just just before uh, the G's Bend exhibit went to um, the Whitney. I'm telling you, shortly after the, the Whitney exhibit opened, mm -hmm. we almost ran out of quilts to sell. Yeah, it was really wonderful. Um, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And it, it came at a time when some of the young women who weren't sure how serious this was, they saw an order for 11 quilts and said, ah, <laughs> I can make some money this way. I mean, nobody makes enough money to live on so that the money women have made historically, um, I mean, Artemis Brandon fenced in her chickens. Mrs. Rankin um, sent kids to Alcorn. Um, we have put bathrooms in houses with that extra money. So, but we didn't um, actually put them in. But no, but I mean the the money. You know, when I when I wrote my first NEA report, I said I don't know whether you guys want to know this, but you have fenced some chickens. You know, you have paid college tuition, and there is now a bathroom in a house, and none of that was existed before the women were able to to make these quilts and earn that little bit of money. So that that sale really was huge for people's confidence and a seeing ahead that, that things could sell.